I was that kid who was a second baseman who wanted to be the shortstop. You know that kid? Because some of you are sitting out there. You are that kid, and so am I. So don't lie. I was that kid who wanted to be the dropback quarterback, was the option quarterback instead. And that kid who grew up in West Covina, California, was brought into pitch one day. I was playing second base. I was good. I was okay at second. I was a hustler. I, I, I probably exceeded my talent by trying really hard. And the coach, Rick White, a sweet man, he was my English teacher and also the baseball coach, probably better at English teaching. Prep school, they have to do both. Well, I, I got up to pitch, because our, our other pitchers were kind of out. And I got up there and I walked four batters in a row. And I didn't throw a strike. Yeah, funny now, not funny then. <laughs> and uh, my girlfriend in the stand, soon to be ex-girlfriend, was there. Yeah, that's funny now, not funny at 17, by the way. <laughs> it's true, man. I had my hair apart in the middle, I had braces. Whew. And I walked four batters in a row, I didn't throw a strike. And Coach Rick White walked out on the mound. And I was embarrassed, I was nervous, I was self-conscious. And he looked at me and he said, you know what you need to do? And I said, no, man. I didn't say it like that, I wasn't like, no, man. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't wearing slacks and a dress shirt. I said, no. And he looked at me and he goes, you gotta throw strikes. <laughs> so strikes are good? That's awesome, thank you very much. Very, very powerful, impactful teaching. Thank you very much. So strikes are near the mitt, and then the, okay, great. I wish I would've known that in the first inning, thank you. <laughs> I love that I have a pen and paper at 17 on the mound. And I, I, Rick, Rick didn't mean anything, Coach White didn't mean anything wrong by that, but we have a, a, a tendency to say things like, you gotta communicate better. You gotta trust each other. You gotta be a better team. And as a, as a student, for myself, just throw strikes didn't resonate with me. And I will do my best, and Ali and Blair will do our best to engage you as much as we can. And we will do it not by telling you, just throw strikes is a tell. And we're not gonna do it by showing you, though we will try to show but I wanna take it even to another step. We've got tells, we've got shows, and we will do everything we can in our power to move you. And we'll do it as a team, moving you through humor, moving you through trying to be as sincere as possible, moving you by moving this along. And I will need your help, and I will need your trust, and I will need your commitment, your buy-in, and your engagement, because this kid from West Covina, California is sitting up here, and I'm gonna give it my all for the next hour and 45. With that said, if we can bring the house lights up, and I'd like everyone to stand. Thank you. What I'd like to do now is have everyone on the inside, the aisles, just turn to your side, because we're gonna pair off into twos, and the groups are even. So if you're on an aisle, just turn in and pair off to the person next to you, okay? We wanna have everyone have a partner. You can stay right where you are. So pair off right here, inside. Just pair off here, two, two. There's 12 people in each row. Shake hands, that's right. You can relax. Good. So you got partners, pair off. Now, wait a second, hold on. Mike and I are gonna start this. We're just gonna do something very simple. We're gonna look at our partner, and we're gonna to count to three. Come on, this way, Lucas. Over and over again. Just count to three. And it's gonna, it's gonna, gonna sound and, and look, no one's being graded, by the way. There's no bonuses involved with this, okay? Mike, we're gonna to count to three. Here's how it goes. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. This guy's amazing. He's in the county. Give him a hand. Good job. All right. <laughs> what if that was it? it? Was like, and that's the presentation. Thank you very much. And freeze. How many of you realize that your partner cannot count to three? I love these guys. I love this. Go, one, no, you, one, no, it's one, two, three. <laughs> Be honest, who said four, who said four? Yeah, you're not in accounting, you're not in accounting. This time we're gonna tweak it a little bit. We did one, two, three, right, Mike? Now we're gonna do um, clap, clap on the one. Two, three, two, three, got it? No, you're gonna do it yet. Michael's gonna do it first, don't practice. You guys are like, okay, I'll go first, then you go, then I'll go. I'm better clapper, are you, are you a good clapper? Then why don't you clap first? <laughs> and go. Two. Three. Two. Three. Two. Three. Two. Three. Three. Two. Three. Oh, he's good. He's good. Oh, this guy's good. Okay. Clap. Two. Three. Let's do it. Come on. All right. Now we're actually engaging. We did the clap. Two. Three. And we're going to do a snap on the two now. We're going to go back to one. We're not going to clap. We're going to go. I know. It's like, whoa. whoa, whoa. And this whole thing's being videotaped. I'm kidding. But it is. Um, <laughs> It is, actually. 
Um, one, okay, one, snap, three. One, snap, three, okay? Mike's gonna try it. Mike's very good, we did not practice this before. Okay, and one, three. One, three. One, three. One, three, one, three. One, three. One. Oh, Michael's fantastic. Let's go. One, snap, three. Stop clapping. He's not that good. All right. One, boom, three. One, boom, three. You know, before we wrap up this first warm up, I do want to say something. Mike's going to stay at me for one more round. I want to point something out. I'll go from kind of funny and I'll try to keep it serious. I'll try to tie back. We'll try to engage it. But I want to point something out. The laughter that I'm seeing, the eye contact that I'm seeing is fantastic. Now, don't go up to a client and be like, one, three, one. <laughs> Don't do that. You won't close the deal, and if you do, you're a very good salesperson. Um, and that's a weird client. So what I do want you to see is we're relaxing now, and some of the, that started with one, two. This is, I don't know what we're doing. One, one, two. Now there's all of a sudden, ha. Ah. You know, how often we'll walk by people, Mike, just, just go with me on this. How often we'll walk by. Hey, what's going on? How you doing? Good. All right. Great. Come on back. You know, this concept of eye contact actually is very important, all right? Don't stare too long. You'll be a creepy guy, okay? But... But I want us to relax and engage and laugh with each other and connect. And we're going to do exercises that are going to show you how. Because I don't tell. Because it doesn't make sense to me. We're going to go back to one, two, three, Mike. We're going to get rid of the we're gonna clap. We're going to get rid of the snap. We're going to get rid of the stomp. We're going to go back to one, two, three. And we're going to do it with you guys one more time. And it goes something like this. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. Good job, man. Give this guy a hand. I'm going to grab his seat, Mike. Good job. Way to go. We're getting to three, come on. And then we're adding some tricks to it. But it's about connecting with the other person. We're here so much, here so much, here so much, here so much. And just looking at the other person. Just looking at them, smiling. I like the guys and the gals that started, and we said, let's go. And they shook hands first. Let's do this. Yeah, it's a one, two, three game, you guys. It's not a game that's like high concept. It's not going to change your lives. But if you commit to it, I'm taken care of and your partner's taken care of. Oh. So, you know, I'll take care of you, brother. All right. Is that on? Yeah. So tell me this. Scott and I are going to do a game called Expert Speakers. Scott, everything you say in this interview is going to be correct, and I will agree with you. That's rule number one. Rule number two is everything I say, Scott, will be correct, and you will agree with me. Okay. And there's a third rule that is so important. And even though we joke a lot and laugh a lot, I want to drive this home right here. I must take care of Scott, and he must take care of me. It does not mean hug me. If I get a hug from someone I've never met, I might be like, that's not, what, what are you doing? That's weird. You know? It's about being sincere and authentic, keeping it appropriate, and taking care of each other. Agreement, agreement. Agreement. And we will take care of each other. I'm not going to try to get a joke out of Scott's expense and hopefully vice versa. Now here's how this game works though. Scott and I are not gonna know the topic of conversation that we're gonna be interviewing on. We're gonna get that topic of conversation from the Wait, audience. I have somebody, I have somebody yeah. over here. Blair, do we have a topic that's yeah. appropriate that Scott and I, I can interview Scott on, he's gonna be an expert and then I'll introduce him and we're gonna have a phenomenal interview. This is great because whatever topic you say as long as it's appropriate is yeah. correct. Yeah, what's a topic that has nothing to do with sports? Horse racing. Horse racing, absolutely. Fantastic. Oh, this is so exciting. Scott, if you can come in as you normally do for your speeches, please. We'll just sit right here on the couches. You okay. can stand. Yeah, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Yes, um, we, have a, uh, we have a very exciting, we're here in Texas. We have a, a PhD and an MD in horse racing. Uh, he has created quite an empire. We're talking to him today about how he's made his horse racing so impactful and how he's gotten the horses to bond as a team, how he's worked through cultural change, and how he can help us do the same. Please put your hands together for Dr. Horsepower. Horsepower. This is... This is a true honor. Thank you so much for uh, being it's here. It's my pleasure to be uh, here. Well, it's our pleasure, so thank you. So it's both of our pleasures. Um, <laughs> doctor, let me first start by saying horse racing is a part of your family, correct? Oh, it goes you, way back. Wait, way when back, you say yeah. way back, though, we're not talking two generations, three generations. Tell, tell the group how far back this is going to blow your mind. Well, this goes back to the very first horses. The very first horses. <laughs> very first horses. Yeah. It goes back to the very first horses, Scott. <laughs> You wrote, you wrote what, what everyone knows is kind of the novella of horse racing called, this goes back to the very first horses. Yeah. That's right, that's right. Well, you, your family, were way into horses and horse racing, and you were born in an area where there were a lot of horses. Can you talk a little bit about that environment, how that impacted you? Well, I was born in a stable. You are born in a stable. <laughs> you are born in a stable. And 
and a lot of kids in that area would make fun of you. They would, they would make fun of you, but you actually saw it as a real honor to, to be born in the it stable. Was great. I, absolutely. The horses were my friends from, from the beginning. They raised me, and we really bonded as a team. You me, bonded me as a team. Horses. You and the horses. You had a way of, this is fascinating, of communicating with those horses at a young age to kind of get them to know what you were thinking and for them to get to know how, how you were thinking and, how, and vice versa. That's right. Can you share maybe a little bit about how you would make those calls to the horses to get their attention? I can do it. I mean, you can make the call. I'll just be, I'll be a horse. <laughs> Well, the, the fact of the matter is it was very nonverbal. Nonverbal. That's right. So it was nonverbal. Right. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of eye contact. A lot of eye contact. A lot of eye contact. Eye contact. Yeah. And you would do a movement. You would do a movement to get the attention of the horse. That's right. And what was that movement? What was that uh, movement? Clap, snap. Oh, clap, snap, song. Yeah. Clap, snap, song. Clap, snap, song. So you went from horse racing in your area, in your neighborhood. Let's talk a little bit about how those horses used to race just around the street. Yeah. Well, I, I grew up on the street. Um, name of the street was Circle Drive. Circle Drive. Which was Circle which Drive, is, which is very which appropriate. Is great. And yeah. it's a true story. Yeah, Circle Drive. And so you would have those horses. You tell the crew. You tell the yeah, crew. No, well, we'd have it. We'd, we'd set the horses out there, and, and once we taught them what the circle was and where to go, they just take off chasing each other around. It. Yeah. <sighs> you had a very unique way of stopping the race. Tell these guys. Tell these guys. Tell these guys. My way of stopping the race, and these horses. You can stand didn't up and show them. You can stand up and show them. Yeah. Well, so. if you're the yep. horse, yep. I'll be the and, horse and you're coming, yep. you're coming along. Yep. My way of stopping the race. Boom! Right there. Just right like there. That. Yeah. Right there. Just, that's called taking care of, not just by me, but by Scott. I just took the mic and held it over and I said, "Have you ever done that before, Scott?" And he said, "No." We can get ourselves to feel confident when we take care of one another, and when you establish rules like you can say whatever you want, and I will agree with you and vice versa, you can start to get that feeling of what it's like to have that confidence. Now, I'm not encouraging you to go in the real world and talk complete nonsense. That's not what this is about. <laughs> what I want to say to you, Scott, what I want to encourage us as a team to do is give each other compliments that are specific and sincere and appropriate. And I will start by saying, you have a fantastic smile. I would not walk up to you in the lobby and be like, hey, I'm Steve, you've got a great smile. It's a little weird. <laughs> but in this setting, I will tell you that you're very accessible and likable. With me? He's not up here with his ego going, I'm going to kill this. And every joke he lands, he's not like, did you get that joke? Because we don't really laugh at that person so much. Because um, they're laughing at their own joke, so they took it from you. Scott, you're accessible, you got a great smile, and you were willing. Did he, did he follow the rules? Did he agree with everything I said? And I, I wish I could open this up into a full discussion. I will tell you, I love when you talk about Circle Drive. I love when you, when you were ridiculous and random and you kept it appropriate. And seriously, that smile is going to get you to make that relationship. Before I continue on, I'll let you get off the stage. Give this man a hand. <laughs> when I go to you as a client, I don't want arrogance, but I want you to have the confidence. I don't want to go to my surgeon and say, how you doing, doc? He's like, your guess is as good as mine. I don't know. <laughs> And I don't want my pilot to say, I, 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 I hope we get there. <laughs> I want him to have, or her to have that confidence. I want us as a team to understand the value of compliments that are specific, just like we would work with a young person. And when you say to a young person, hey, good job, they want to know why. And if we can mix those compliments up so they're more than just, hey, good memo, good job in that meeting, great email, good job on that revenue, hey, heck of a job on that sale. If we can be specific with one another and partner up and say, hey, you know, Blair and I worked, and Ali worked, and Trevor, we worked together for years, and for them to say, hey, Steve, great job there, slow down here, hey, I really like what you did here, and be specific, that's teachable.